This is the Weather Lounge here at Weatherworks. Hi there, everyone, and welcome back to the Weather Lounge here at Weatherworks. I'm your host, meteorologist Brad Miller, and I would like to thank you for taking the time to listen to our weather podcast. And joining me as always here in the Weather Lounge is my co-host and co-star, meteorologist Mike Mahalik. Hey there, Mike. Hey, Brad. You know, I kind of like that co-star thing. Yeah, you know, we got uh, we got a few stars here at the at Weatherworks. Uh, Mark, Mike Priante, also one of our co-hosts and co-stars. And, uh, and don't forget, yeah, too. don't forget about our guests. Um, you know, they are certainly uh, nice to have on our uh, Weather Lounge podcast here. But uh, Brad, in this podcast, we're talking about precipitation types, aren't we? Yeah, you know, we're uh, we're into winter now and we've had several events, uh, not only here in the Northeast, but across the Midwest and uh, much of the United States. And uh, we're getting closer into that, you know, deep part of winter where, you know, any storm that really comes up here along the coast or impacts folks across the middle of the United States, you know, there's almost always going to be different precipitation types, whether it's snow, whether it's rain, whether it's freezing rain or it's sleet. And, you know, in the summertime, it's easy. Everything's going to be rain. If we have a severe thunderstorm, you get some hail mixed in. Uh, But Mm -hmm. uh, not the case, though, when we get into winter, because, uh, you know, we're dealing with a lot of different precipitation types. And not only are they, they impact the forecast differently, impact everyone's life differently, whether it's uh, driving, uh, whether Mm -hmm. it's just being outside, folks working outside. So, you know, it's very important that we get that part of the forecast correct. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the impacts are much different here um, with the different precipitation types you have, especially when you have freezing rain, which is that liquid rain that mm-hmm. falls on surfaces and just forms that glaze of ice, which is pretty much the most dangerous um, that yeah. you can have out there. But you also have sleet, those little balls of ice that fall um, for a long period of time. And then, of course, you have snow um, that everybody loves. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so- there's there's a way that this sets up here, and it has to do with how the atmosphere is structured. So we live in the troposphere, which is the lowest level of the atmosphere, and usually the temperature goes down as you go up. So it gets cooler as you go up. But in these different precipitation type situations, that's when we might have a little bit of a warm layer that's higher up, maybe five or 7,000 feet or something like that. And that causes a problem because it melts the snowflakes and then you have those uh, raindrops refreezing back into little balls of ice. Or if it doesn't have enough time to freeze, it creates a glaze on the ground. So it's quite an interesting setup and we're always dealing with those rain snow lines, those rain mix lines here in the northeast, that's for sure. Yeah, we'll we'll get into different precipitation types here uh, in just a few minutes on the other side of the break. But uh, you know, again, as Mike was saying, you know, that atmosphere it just can change so quickly. You know, whether the winds at the surface are coming off the ocean, which is milder, or you have a wind that's you know ten thousand feet up, that's colder, that's helping to drive in colder air aloft. So you know, these are the things that we have to determine when and where it's going to happen, and and that's going to be the uh, solution to what's going to fall from the sky, and that's what we try to predict. Because like Mike said, you know, that that layer of warm air, is it only a thousand feet thick or is it 5,000 feet thick? Is it going to be snow to rain, the snow to sleet? And a lot of times and, and before I was a meteorologist, you know, you run into situations where, you know, it's 25 degrees out. But, hey, it's not snowing. It's, it's, it's freezing rain or it's sleeting. Why is this? It's plenty cold to snow. Right. So, you know, these are the kind of things that the, the atmosphere – uh, you know, the different layers, of the atmosphere is where it comes into play. And, and, and you know, that, that's the hardest part, really, of trying to forecast is, uh, you know, where, where and when these types of uh, situations occur with these winter storms. Yeah. And, you know, uh, we are in a podcast format, so we'd love to show you guys some diagrams of how this all works <laughs> out and how it looks. Um, and cross sections of the atmosphere. But we don't have that in the podcast land. But... <laughs> I do have some very good uh, comparisons to use or very good um, uh, yes, metaphors. I don't know what you want to say here, but um, that you oh, can... This is the, oh, that's right. I forgot about this. This is food, right, Mike? Yes. 
Yes, I compare the atmosphere to food uh, in this. Or podcast. you use food to compare it. Yes, I mean this could be this could be groundbreaking, Mike. Yeah, it's it is, and it really allows you to visualize <laughs> um, how the atmosphere is set up in in certain situations with freezing rain or possibly with uh, sleet. Um, so, guys, we will have all about precipitation types right after this break. So please stay with us. Have you ever wanted to know exactly how much snow or ice just fell in your backyard or how much snow you just plowed from that two acre parking lot? How about getting documentation that explains why you applied several applications of salt to a busy apartment complex? When it comes down to snow and ice verification, it can be a headache trying to find accurate totals for the busy winter season. Certified snowfall totals from WeatherWorks provide a stress-free way to get reliable information for the exact location you need. It is your complete winter weather verification platform. For more information, visit CertifiedSnowfallTotals.com today or call us at 908-850-8600. When you think weather, think WeatherWorks. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Weather Lounge here at WeatherWorks. And today's topic is precipitation types. And uh, Mike, uh, I think that's going to bring us to our most popular precipitation type, which, of course, is everyone's favorite four-letter word, snow. Oh, oh, oh. okay, good. <laughs> you were going to say snow. All right. All yeah, right, that's fine. you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it is, it's uh, is you know the most exciting i think precipitation type it's uh yeah also yeah. sometimes the most difficult uh mm. precipitation type to uh, forecast on our end but uh it does i think uh impact uh, i think more people than anything else uh is uh, yeah. snow because it's just something that has to be dealt with and not only removed we have to deal with it and travel through it mm-hmm. and um you know while we of course have to deal with other types of precipitation but i think uh the snow is uh quite impactful for most people yeah and i think it's just uh with snow i think what makes it so intriguing is that you know uh it, it just changes the landscape entirely. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why people just love seeing snow so much. Cause then all of a sudden you have this, you know, <laughs> puffy snow all over the ground and it's hanging on trees and it, it looks really, really cool for everybody and very picturesque. But, you know, I mean, snow is the reason why I got into weather. I'd say, sure. Brad. Um, <laughs> I think most meteorologists, uh, <laughs> unless you're from like the South or somewhere that doesn't see any snow. Yeah, that's you true. Know, it's almost like snow is uh, one of the drivers of uh, yeah. the reasons why they're into. Uh, it's like a, yeah, it's like a prerequisite when you go to college <laughs> for meteorology. They ask, "What got you into weather?" And if you don't say snow, that's like yeah. points against you right away. Well, um, I'll but, tell you, uh, as yeah, growing up as a kid, I like, and I grew up in New Jersey, and just some of those forecast when you, you took a chance like i don't think we're gonna have school tomorrow we're gonna get like six to ten inches of snow mm. and then uh you're waiting for it and you wake up the next morning and it's all rain or somehow it missed you and you're just all yeah. disappointed and it's Ooh. unfortunately it's one of my biggest disappointments growing up i can remember several times like oh we're gonna get a snowstorm and yeah. then uh you don't get it and you're like oh no no not my homework's due <laughs> yeah i know i mean i've been there too i mean i was all excited one time for a four to eight inch snowstorm and uh yeah we got about a half inch to an inch yeah. out of that storm when i was a kid and i was just baffled yeah as to uh what happened there um so but uh i mean snow i mean let's 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 talk about it a little bit brad i mean it, snow is uh an easier winter precip tight to at least forecast the type of precipitation is, is what i'm getting at here because um, the temperature from the ground all the way up into the cloud is 32 degrees or below, typically, for snow right. to occur. So, you know, that's that's an easy forecast. We don't got to worry about any mixing with sleet or any mixing with uh, freezing rain. It's just going to be all snow. Now we got to figure out how much actually piles How much up. of it, yeah. So, so well, yeah. You know, it, 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 well, you know, it comes down to then, the, like I said, the temperature, how much moisture is available. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's something that uh, as we watch the forecast evolve and when we are forecasting snow, you know, how much of that is going to be on the pavement? How much is that just going to be on grass and Mm -hmm. car tops and things like that? So, you know, not only, you know, you could forecast snow till you're blue in the face uh, on the grass and trees and stuff like that. But, you know, until it really has an impact on, on the pavement and the roadways and when people have to shovel or remove the snow, 
mm-hmm. and, uh, and plow, you know, plow drivers and things like that. So, you know, that that's where the real challenge comes in because right. we know how, you know, it could really, like you said, not only change the scenery, change the landscape, but impact people's lives about how they're going to get around because, you know, life just can't really stop. And if it does, you know, it's only for a brief amount of time until the snow is removed. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a big business, that's for sure, snow removal. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that brings us around to our clients, too, because, you know, for our clients, we're not only trying to forecast how much snow falls on the grass, like Brad said, but we're also trying to give them a better idea of how much is going to fall actually on the pavement that they're going to have to work with. You know, so you might have a three to six inch snowfall, but maybe the pavement only uh, sees two to four inches or one to three inches, you know, based on the prior day's conditions. So, you know, in our forecast, we try to take account for that. We try to look at what the pavement temperatures are, when the snow is falling. Is it during the day or is it at night? Um, You know, if pavements have been pre-treated from prior storms. So we take all that into account when we're making our forecast for our clients so we can give them the best information. Um, on how that snow right. is actually going to impact and how fast it's going to impact their parking lots and places they need to do. Yeah, yeah and going back to where we uh, mentioned the uh, the cross section of the atmosphere and mm-hmm. what we started with here on this part was, you know, the, the snow falls, it's below 32 degrees, but there are times when mm-hmm. it could be above freezing where we're at you know, right, at, at sure. the lowest level of the troposphere, you know, but as long as that temperature is 32 or below, usually mm-hmm. uh, about 5,000 feet above us, that snowflake usually can make it all the way down to the ground as snow. Now, again, if it's 38 degrees, and we've all been in this situation before, it's mm-hmm. 38, 39 degrees, and you're watching the snow, and it's just kind of melting on contact with uh, either, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's pavement or even the grass and stuff like that, but snow can make, you know, a, 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 a a 5,000, 6,000 foot fall from the cloud as snow and still stay snow, even though it's above freezing, maybe at the surface or where we're living. Sure. Um, but, you know, it, as the, as the snow continues, sometimes though, it will help to drop the temperature where we're living mm-hmm. also and change over to more of a, you know, uh, an accumulating snow on the ground and the pavement if that cold air continues to, uh, you know, be brought down by the snow itself. So yeah, it's just I mean, a very, good... uh, it, it's, that's where the frustrating part sometimes can come in. Yeah. Well, the good a good example would be uh, even uh, last year, where I remember a snow shower was coming through. I think it was about you know forty degrees or something. And oh yeah, yeah, I remember shower. some of the squalls. I can remember yes. that came through. Yeah, heavy snow squalls came through, which is basically like a almost like a thunderstorm in the summertime, but it'd be in the winter. Right. And a lot of times they don't have thunder, obviously, but um, but basically you're getting that heavy um, snowfall. Blinding snowfall, yeah, with with the squalls, and that just comes down so hard that it drops the temperature from forty degrees down to maybe thirty four or thirty five or something like that. So, um, yeah, I mean that goes to show, and and I think a lot of people don't realize that. No, if it snows hard enough, Brad, Mm -hmm. that snow will stick sure on anything. You know, I mean, just look at earlier this year, too. I'm going to give another example. I think Denver was like 90 degrees or something. And then they they had had the uh, the September snow. I remember that. And then they had a cold front come through. They dropped to, you know, whatever it was, 20s, 30s, and they had heavy snow. And guess what? The snow stuck on the pavement yeah. after a day was just in the 90s. After, now it's in after the 20s. months of summertime weather, yeah. I know. So that just goes to show if it snows hard enough, I don't mm-hmm. care what the temperature was the day prior. It's going to stick. Sure. Um, so even during the day, you know, and I think a lot of people need to understand that. And, um, you know, but there are times when it doesn't snow hard enough and it just, it's just a light snow and it just yeah, melts it's, it's on a, contact and it's, it's a pretty it snow. Do a it doesn't lot. do too much damage uh, to, uh, you yeah, know, mood the snow. roadways. Yeah. It keeps. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's definitely a, uh, a, 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 an issue that we deal with uh, on the forecasting side. It's, it's, you know, we can, you can, again, predict snow as much as you want, but you know, how it, how it, reacts on the pavement mm-hmm. or how it reacts on all the other surfaces and you know was it previously cold was it previously warm um, you know those are the yeah. things that uh, we kind of 
our challenge with uh, every forecast and every uh, winter event really almost seems like uh, in the last couple of years have been a lot of those events, uh, especially here in the Northeast, where it just, uh, you know, get these uh, half snow, half rain events, and then they go back to snow. And it's just, uh, it's, it's it seems like we haven't had a good quote, normal snowstorm in quite some time here in the Northeast. Yeah, well, that is true. I mean, there's always, I mean, we're so close to the water that you have a lot yeah. of uh, uh, maritime air working in from time to time. Um, so that kind of, you know, tries to stick its nose into the atmosphere yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, change our precip type over to something else. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I think it is important too, Brad, now that we're just talking about snow, I think we should kind of finish up on, um, snow ratios and things like that a little bit, yeah. um, because typically um, a liquid to snow ratio or a snow to liquid ratio is like a 10 to 1. So mm -hmm. if you have one inch of rainfall, you're going to get about 10 inches of snowfall piling up. Right. Um, now, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, that's just kind of a typical guide. Sure. But if you have temperatures that are colder, um, that can increase your snow ratio. If it's 15 degrees, you might get a fluffier snow of, you know, 15 to one or something like that happening. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, it's not only the cold air too. It's actually the size and shape of the snowflakes too, Brad. Right. I mean, we, we don't always have the same type of snowflake falling yeah, they, in the cloud. They, they can vary in different sizes, different shapes. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the typical snowflake you, you know, you want, if you want to get a good accumulating snow, you want to see those big fat flakes. And, and yeah. again, that typically occurs when temperatures are in the mid to upper twenties, some low thirties, you know, yeah. and you have the, the moisture content there and, and you get your, I guess, if you want to call it a normal snowflake, which most folks can think of, you get the six sides and yeah, it's symmetrical. The dendrites you get. The dendrites, right. Yeah. Um, but again, like you just said, there's sometimes uh, there's, there's, differences in moisture availability mm -hmm. for the cloud. There's difference in temperature. Sometimes the temperature does vary, even though it's still below freezing, you know, it may be, you know, 10 yeah. degrees or 20 degrees, depending upon what it is, you know, right. you can get different uh, shapes and sizes of those snowflakes. They come down in like sometimes needles come down yeah. in like uh, oblong shapes and they won't, if you will, they won't stack themselves as well as like a good right. dendrite, right? So you won't you won't get the you know maybe your accumulations cut down a little bit because of the way the the snowflake yeah. or the actual you know the size of it is. So right and again, so it's hard to take that into account because you know your your, your accumulation may be three to six inches of good dendrites, right. but if you get a bunch of needles and almost sleety looking snow, then you may not get as much and it won't it won't pile up as as uh, efficiently. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's all due to the cloud dynamics in there too. And you're you're mm -hmm. you're thinking about, you know, where the snow is actually being made in the snow growth zone, right. we like to call it. Yeah. And if there's no lift there, <laughs> meaning no upward motion in that uh, zone, well, we're not going to make very good snowflakes, you know. Right. <laughs> and then that's when we get those needles and things like that falling. So. Uh, and we get needles all the time in Hackettstown, New Jersey. <laughs> it seems well, like it. Go outside. You know, it's got to be snowing good out <laughs> there. Nah, it's a bunch of needles. The it's radar of... looks great. <laughs> we all go outside uh, at the Weatherworks uh, headquarters there. And uh, there it is. Needles, terrible snow rates. Yeah. You know, we're doing, you're lucky to get a half inch an hour. And it's like, ugh. But, hey, you know, that's that's where our office is located. Um, yeah. But I, I think that's enough about snow, Brad. I think the next thing we have to talk about is sleep. Yeah, and then this gets us into our earlier chat about the atmosphere and how mm -hmm. it usually gets colder as you move up, right, Mike? But this one's a little different because now we're yeah. getting some some air in the middle of the atmosphere that actually is above freezing. So what happens right. now? I mean, it's, you know, it's snowing, but it's, uh, it's, it's snowing above us, but now it's, it's, it's changing over to some uh, right. kind of sleety mixture. And at the same time, I'm looking at my temperature here at the ground and it says 29 degrees. So why is it not snowing? Yeah. So, so here's the, here's what's happening. Okay. Think of uh, atmosphere almost like, like an Oreo. Okay. Mm, so yeah, I like that. So, yeah. No, I like that. So, uh, you, yeah. Yeah. You have your chocolate pieces uh, on the bottom and the top. So the chocolate pieces are cold air below 32 degrees, but in the mm. middle where that, um, where the icing is, you know, that everybody likes it's yep. warm. 
it, maybe it's above 32, maybe it's 40 degrees or something wow, like that. Yeah. So basically, if your atmosphere looks like that, you're having snow fall from the cloud, it runs into the icing <laughs> or yeah, the warm yeah. air, um, it melts that snowflake, so now you have a droplet of water, and then it hits that bottom half of the Oreo, which is colder air, below freezing air again, so that water droplet freezes again into those little balls of ice right or it tries to freeze back over to a snowflake again but it doesn't have enough time right no it can't it can't freeze into a snowflake once that occurs because you know you just have that little ball of water it, it's right. just going to look like pellets like bbs out of a bb mm -hmm. gun something like that so that's what's going to hit the ground so um that's kind of how sleet works and i got to tell you brad as a guy who's been in the snow plowing industry and snow and ice removal industry for a while i hated sleet yeah man sleet was one of my least favorite things because it, you try to it doesn't stick together like snow so it's hard to push um and when you do push it, it it's also heavy it's dense um, yeah. and dense you know it's like a it's like a three to one ratio remember we talked about snow yeah. is a 10 to one ratio or more you know now we're talking about like a three to one ratio so yeah, real like balls dense. of ice it's just like yeah. you know it's it's that you can't uh you can't push that around and if you do it's very heavy yeah so you try to push that it falls off the sides of the plow because it doesn't like to stick together because it's like pushing a bunch of bbs and it's like man i gotta tell you i do not like sleet and i remember Man, I think it was in 2007, we had a, a, a storm on Valentine's Day uh, in eastern Pennsylvania, and it was about six to seven inches of sleet. Oh, my God. Straight sleet. I thought it was going to turn over to snow. I was like, it's got to turn over to snow. It's got to turn over to snow. It's it never did. so hard. And nope, it just never did because that nose of warm air above our heads was just, just enough. Icing. Yeah, to melt that uh, snowflake and, and turn it all back to ice. So, um, yeah, so that's sleet. And, and uh, not only that, my I mean, favorite. you can put down salt, too, and it won't have as much of an impact on it like like it would it with snow because it's, yeah. again, balls of ice. And, yeah. you know, and it, the salt it, actually kind of looks like the sleet, but at the same time, the salt's just not having a, a, a great uh, impact yeah. on that as it, as it com well, continues because to pile up. It, if you think about it in snow, there's a lot of air in there too, mm -hmm. you know, in the sleet, you don't, it's just boom, <laughs> all yeah. packed together, you know? So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a tough thing to deal with. That's for sure. And I know as a snow lover, uh, when I was a kid, as soon as it started sleeting, I know I was done. I, I yeah. knew the sleet was coming. I was like, Oh man, it's sleeting. And well, I'm thinking it, to myself, it, why is it sleeting? It's 19 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Now, sometimes, though, that could work in your favor if you're hoping for snow because maybe you're going in the other direction or you're starting to, you know, you get a little sleet mixing in with the with the rain. rain and then, yeah, you sure. know, maybe like, ah, oh, maybe the cold air is starting to win out and then you can go over to snow. But I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Most of the time, it's the other way around where you're you're snowing and then all of a sudden, yeah. uh oh, I hear a few pings of sleet. And that means the yeah. warmer air is starting to work in more yeah. and more and eventually you know what the end result's going to be it's going to be a change over to rain if you're a snow lover no absolutely i knew back then even that once that yeah. sleep started happening my snow was going to turn to garbage <laughs> <laughs> it turned to slushy mess yeah and uh there goes my nice high snowfall uh, amounts but yeah. um you know and uh so now that we're out of the oreo cookie situation that i <laughs> well, we, we can we can keep uh, the Oreo cookie situation going because I think our next precipitation type uh, that we're going to move on to is freezing rain. Yeah. You know, the Oreo cookie one might work with this yeah. uh, comparison. It's just, just going to be a little it's just going to be a little yeah. more of the uh, of the cookie part, <laughs> at least <laughs> yeah. on one end, at least on one end. <laughs> well, no, I think it would be actually more icing. It's more well, like a double or triple stuff icing because we have more warm okay, air. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm thinking from the ground up, but you're right. Yeah, I guess it would be okay. more icing, more warm air. Yeah. So in the sleet situation, we are looking at a regular Oreo cookie. Okay. Now, in the freezing rain situation, we're looking double at stuff. a double stuff or yeah, a mega stuff, stuff even. <laughs> uh, I think they have a mega stuff now. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So what's happening here is you still have the snow uh, falling from the cloud. Now it's running into the warm air once again, um, but this warm air layer is much, much thicker, 
and the bottom chocolate of the Oreo cookie, which is that cold air right at the surface, is right. very thin. There's not a whole lot of space. Maybe it's only up to the tops of the trees uh, that you see outside. So maybe it's only 20, 30 feet off the ground uh, right. where you're having uh, the warm air. So you have a little layer of cold air at the surface. So that rain is staying rain through the warm air. It doesn't have time to refreeze into the sleep. sleep. Yeah. So it doesn't have time because the layer of cold is so shallow. And then when it hits the ground, it's hitting surfaces that are at or below freezing. So that raindrop is turning to ice immediately right. and forming a glaze on everything. So it's not, yeah, that's what's happening there. It's just forming a nice glaze. So a lot of times some people get freezing rain and sleet mixed up. Right. Um, because they're thinking freezing rain, okay, it's a raindrop that's frozen, but no, not really. Freezing rain is liquid rain that falls and freezes right. on contact and turns everything to a skating rink. And I got to say, that's probably one of the most dangerous uh, winter precipitation types that you want to have. Yeah, and, and the hardest thing to comprehend with that is like you you can be sitting in your car and, and again, you're past the sleet phase, you're past the snow phase. And you're looking at your windshield and all you see is, is a regular raindrop. And it's but you look at your car thermometer, or your truck thermometer, and it says it's 28 degrees out. How could that mm -hmm. be? But just like you said, that that warm layer it, just above the ground is so, mm -hmm. I guess, deep Thick. that, you yep. know, you've already changed over from snow to sleet and you're just getting that liquid rain, not enough time to change back mm -hmm. over. So it falls on that frozen surface and, you know, it just turns into like you said, a, a glaze of ice. And that is just, again, very dangerous. It, 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 yeah. Everyone, I think everyone that lives in the Northeast or anywhere really north, northern United States, um, you know, you've dealt with freezing rain at some point and you understand that, you know, a long duration of that not only, you know, creates, uh, you know, a, a layer of ice on everything, but it weighs everything down. And mm -hmm. of course it turns the roads and, sidewalks and anything that's exposed you know into a like you said a skating rink and very dangerous yeah and a lot of times you might not even realize because you're looking at um a blacktop road that just kind of looks wet but actually it could be ice mm -hmm. um with that situation so yeah it can be very dangerous when driving even walking i mean i can recall a few times trying to go out to the mailbox and sliding down the driveway <laughs> You know, yeah. trying to get there uh, for the newspaper or mail or whatever it may be. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, you know, it's not just the roadways, too. Like you said, once we get that ice sticking to the power lines and to the trees, then it creates another hazard where either you're going to get the tree uh, branches breaking or you're going to get the power lines collecting so much ice that it's going to break the power line off. And then you got some power outage issues mm -hmm. happening. It's just like a domino effect from there. Yeah, I mean, so it's just a – freezing rain is an all-around nightmare, it seems. <laughs> yeah, and um, there's really only – you can't plow it. I mean, it's no. the only thing you could hope for is for the temperature to get above freezing. But if you know, you know, it's 28 degrees and the temperature is going to sit there for at least the next 12 hours or maybe slowly rise through the night, you know, you may not get above freezing again until, you know, 8, 9 o'clock the next morning. You, you have a – a long yeah. duration here and and it's it may not even be the, the freezing rain you may just stop and have freezing drizzle mm -hmm. or it just continues to accumulate and and accrete on these exposed areas and there's only so much you can do and at that point like you said you just kind of yeah. kind of wait it out and and you can salt as much as yeah. you can but i guess you know even that at a point may not uh you know do the trick and you just have to kind of wait until the temperature warms up enough but uh, yeah, it's a it's a tough one to forecast, and you, it's usually not widespread to a point where like, you know, mm -hmm. you're talking about states and states of, of freezing rain. It's usually in that transition zone between the snow and the rain, but mm -hmm. it sure enough can be, a, you know, if it, if it sits there long enough, it can be a major issue, and it, it turns into you know ice storms sometimes uh, across uh, several parts of the United States that deal with it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, freezing rain is, is, is just like you said, Brad, it, it doesn't cover it's a whole giant area usually. Um, but typically it forms because of something called cold air damming that occurs mm -hmm. on the that's eastern, another one, yeah. Yeah, on the, on the east coast. And that's where we get kind of um, 
uh, cold air stuck in valleys, stuck along the east side of the Appalachians as uh, colder air is filtering down from the north. And uh, it's hard to get that out of those valleys it's once stubborn, you get it in yeah. there. Yeah, it's stubborn. So, you know, you're getting that south wind. But remember, if it's a warmer wind, that, that air likes to rise. You know, it doesn't want to really scour out into those valleys. Right. Um, so it's hard to get some of those areas above freezing uh, once you're below freezing. And this is a classic type of setup that we see, you know, maybe uh, in the Connecticut River Valley. I was going to say around the Hartford um, area, you get down yep. to central Connecticut and northern New Jersey, Avon, Hudson yeah. Valley, too. I mean, it's just really tough. Yeah, same thing kind of happens up in southern New Hampshire into uh, central portions of Massachusetts where, you know, that temperature just kind of gets stuck. And, uh, you know, once it's there and stuck and you don't have a whole lot of wind, it's probably going to stay there for a while. And it's yep. hard to get that scoured out. Yeah, um, but um, I know our clients out there aren't too happy when freezing rain uh, storms come in no. because they got to just keep wasting so much product. It's not wasting, but uh, you know what I mean? It's, they're just using so much product, so much salt to try to keep that at bay, especially at zero tolerance sites. Uh, we are trying to keep those roads free of ice, and that's kind of like in the contract too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it is a it is a tough one to deal with. Um, yeah, I mean the hardest part of any forecast in the winter, I still think. I mean you, you can you can forecast your 48 inches of snow, and you know it's going to change over to sleet for a little while, then probably change over to rain. But you know when we talk about the ice part, and we're forecasting a quarter to a half an inch of ice accretion on, on objects and even some roads. And, you know, that's, that's the serious stuff about the icing and the freezing mm -hmm. rain. You know, you get those, you know, you, you kind of want those quick transitions. We're fine with that. Hey, here's your snow, you know, it's going to switch over and eventually get the rain. You may have an hour or so of some freezing mm -hmm. rain where, you know, you can kind of deal with it. Plus you already have product probably down from the snow, but yeah, it w it's when you get those long duration freezing rain events and uh, icing events is when you get into the real problems. And you know, we've seen it. You can just you can Google any kind of ice storm. I think the biggest one I can remember was up in Montreal, where you mm. know years ago I think it was like the mid to late nineties they had. Yeah. You know, some areas were getting like four to five inches of ice. I mean, I can't even fathom that. Yeah, kind of it, it was it ice. was a lot of ice for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it might have been like two inches of ice on a lot yeah, of things. Maybe I'm just like that. Mean, I remember a lot of the power lines were just bending all the way to they the just ground. Clapped. Yeah, they just couldn't yeah. even handle the weight. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I think we said our piece about freezing rain, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, you had mentioned it, Brad, just changing from freezing rain. And finally, things warm up through the entire atmosphere from the surface all the way up to the top of the cloud. And now we have... Just plain old rain. Plain old rain. Now, now, mind <laughs> you, though, one other thing, though, you know, even in the summertime, it is snowing at some point. Um, yeah, I mean, but, up, up high in the cloud, yeah. it can be cold enough for that. Yeah, we're, we're talking, yeah, we're, we're talking, you know, in, in the summertime, you know, above like 25, 30,000 feet, where yeah. it's, it's still cold enough to snow, but, you know, the freezing level is, you know, so high in the summer. You know, typically in the summertime here in the Northeast, you know, freezing levels 18, 19,000 feet, but it's, you know, it still can snow above that, even though you're getting uh, rain at the surface. But yeah, it's just, it's so so high up that it, it's just yeah. able to change the rain so easily. But yeah, the rain portion of precipitation type, Mike. You know, that's probably the most common that we deal with every day. But you know, there's different yeah. types of rain. You know, have a you can have a a, a long standing widespread rain where you you mm -hmm. you know get a good uh, you know half inch to an inch of rain. Sometimes that's a a nice uh, thing to have in the summertime, you know, you could, you could use a good soaking rainfall from time to time, but you know, then we deal with the, uh, you know, heavy rainfall and, you know, thunderstorms, a kind of, of rain, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's different types of, of rain that we deal with, uh, you know, what we call synoptic rain when you get a long uh, standing rainfall for like six to 12 hours versus like a convective rainfall where you may get a quick thunderstorm and you get a quick inch of rain within a half an hour. Yeah, no, absolutely, for sure. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, also, when you have you know, rain happening after a big snowstorm, which has happened in the past, I think in 1996, after that blizzard there in oh, uh, yes. eastern Pennsylvania, there was a big rainstorm that happened. Okay, so now you have two feet of snow on the ground, and then you're going to dump a whole lot of rain into that mm -hmm. snowpack. And Along temperatures with temperatures warm that up. were like, I think in the 40s and even in the yeah. 50s. So now you have a situation where 
you know, you're getting too much rain. There's a lot of moisture in the snowpack. The snowpack's melting. Everything's running off. So now you have a flooding problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so sometimes rain isn't always a great thing. Although no, a lot of times, sure. <laughs> you know, a lot of times it can be helpful in the winter at the end of a storm if you just had some snow and you know you changed the rain and now you know that you can push everything off and, and deal with it from there um, and then but, deal with uh, the arctic blast that comes in uh, yeah. after all this stuff moves out yeah. so everything uh, flash freezes then too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's and that's a little bit different that's not freezing rain that's not right. super cooled water droplets that that's are freezing just basically on contact. The, the black ice that we deal with yeah. and the uh and the ice that forms uh on just wet surfaces when you get a, a temperature drop uh you know a quick temperature drop yeah yeah absolutely and brad has it exactly right yeah everything's just wet the temperature drops and then we have a flash freeze especially if you're going into the evening or the night mm -hmm. um so that's something tricky that uh you know we always try to do our best job if that's in the forecast for our clients too um, but uh, you know, one, one thing uh, I think a lot of folks don't understand, and I'll tell you, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it was late in life when, well, not late in life, I'm not that old, but, you know, that I realized what a raindrop and what it actually looks like. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look to like say that. typical. Yeah, well, it's it doesn't look like that typical shape that you see drawn on, you know, a piece of paper, like you're a school kid and you drop, do that little teardrop thing. Yeah, rain right. doesn't look like that when it's actually nope. falling. So... What happens is when the rain is falling, it's falling fast and the air resistance is pushing on the bottom of that snow or the raindrop. Um, so actually the bottom of the raindrop is kind of flat and the top of it kind of looks like just like a semicircle. So it's kind of like a hamburger bun. Like a hamburger bun, yeah. It's, it's a hamburger bun falling from the sky, people. Basically, yeah. <laughs> All no right. one, yeah, just don't notice that until you, uh, you know look at it under a microscope and things like that. You know, and Brad, one last thing I, I think we should clarify in this uh, podcast is the difference between sleet and hail. <laughs> because yeah. a lot of times it gets mixed up where people, it's sleeting outside and people said it was hailing so much, um, but it's not exactly the same thing. So no. really know, not even close. It's, yeah. it's, it's two different, uh, functions really of how yeah, these two precipitation types occur. You know, I guess the easiest way to describe to everyone is that you can't get sleet in the summer and you yeah. usually can't get hail in the winter. It has happened before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, it, uh, it usually doesn't happen in the winter. Yeah. Right. But t typically you're going to get your hail in the summertime from really uh strong thunderstorms and that's right. uh usually uh yeah i guess a so, threshold that we hit for a severe thunderstorm is when we get hail that's at least one inch in diameter right sure um but what happens with hail is that um basically in a thunderstorm you have these updrafts and you have downdrafts that occur in a thunderstorm so the updrafts go up vertically into the storm it takes raindrops that are falling in that cloud and pushes them high up into the atmosphere where it's cold enough to freeze them. Right, where we talked about over 20,000, 25,000 feet in the summertime. But right. some of the thunderstorms we know that uh, can typically get up to 35 to 40,000 feet. So think about that yeah, air, that, that, that piece of, uh, or that raindrop getting pushed, you know, mm -hmm. up to where temperatures are maybe even into the 20s. Right. So that gets thrown up into the cloud. Um, usually it takes a piece of dust or something like that that it has to make an ice uh, ball on. Um, so then that starts falling a little bit on a downdraft, but then the updraft might pick it up again and throw it back up into the cloud. So then the water gets on there again. It another freezes, layer of ice. Yeah. And makes another layer of ice. And that cycle kind of keeps going on so long as the thunderstorm is strong until it's too heavy where the updraft can't keep it up in the storm and it has to fall out. Now, granted, um, again, this ice ball is falling from 20,000 feet. It may melt a little bit, but, you know, it may be a lot bigger up in the sky and up in the cloud. Yeah. But, you know, to get those ice balls all the way down to the ground or those hailstones, mm -hmm. um, you know, it is doing a little bit of melting. But just think about how impressive it is out, out in the Midwest where they do still get some, you know, softball size hail and, yeah. and things like that. And we've, we've covered all that in the Severe Weather uh, podcast. But. You know that that's the difference between mm -hmm. you know the hailstones that we get in the 
thunderstorm in the summertime and uh, sleet that we know uh, kind of bouncing around, but usually sleet's not much bigger than, you know, uh, right. you know a grain of salt or, or things like that. And probably a little bit bigger than that, but yeah. you, know, you can get, like you a... can't get sleet balls the size of uh, baseballs like you can with, with hailstones. Yeah, no, absolutely. Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I couldn't imagine being outside and possibly getting whacked at one of those things. <laughs> um, but, uh, and actually you can, if you cut, a hailstone in half mm. after it falls you can actually yeah. see those layers of ice that have formed on the cloud it's so you really almost, cool yeah you can almost like count how many times it went up and down <laughs> yeah, it almost looks like like a like a tree ring if you cut a yep. tree in half which is the growth cycle of the tree same mm -hmm. idea you know every layer is another year for the tree well this is another mm -hmm. round of updraft <laughs> and downdraft action yep. from the uh, for the hailstone in the thunderstorm so um, yeah. yeah. And like so, I said, the, the hail usually happens in the summer, sleet in the winter. However, Mike, I think a couple of years ago, it might have been just like two winters ago where mm -hmm. we had hail in December from a severe thunderstorm. Yeah, I mean, it was it was crazy. It, it was actually somewhere in the middle. You couldn't tell if it was sleet or if it was actually hail because it was a little bit bigger than sleet and it wasn't quite as big no. as your typical hail and you're kind of like well what, what is this stuff um falling well from there, the there's another word i'll throw out there and i'll let you you know we kind of didn't talk about this before the podcast but maybe you can explain it but i'll put you on the I spot can, sure Some, yeah sometimes you get the the grapple <laughs> grapple yeah i tell that to my parents all the time what was that it looked like styrofoam dipping dots or yeah. or or, or styrofoam That's balls. That's kind of like a mixture of sleet and snow, I guess. Yeah. So, well, what what actually happens is that you have a snowflake that actually got covered or rhymed, we like to call it, in water and ice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that snowflake was falling somewhere in there. It hit some liquid water somewhere in there. It got cold enough to freeze again. Um, so basically, it's a snowflake coated in ice. Cool. Yeah, and it's like, so, a, like I said, dipping dot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what you basically have. And uh, I just found something that kind of reminded me of it. It's a M and M that has a cocoa uh, puff in the middle of it. <laughs> there you How go. About that. Yeah. So, so the uh, you and the I, I love the analogies today and the com and the comparisons. <laughs> yeah. there. Oreo so, cookie and the so so a grapple is uh, one of these M and M's with the cocoa puff in the middle, and the cocoa puff in the middle is the snowflake part. Yeah. The candy on the outside is the ice. See, I got all kinds of explanations for these yeah. things. Uh, Brad, <laughs> Maybe that's what we'll do. we'll do a visual podcast one day, and we'll yeah. use up all these different, or we'll do, we'll do a video one day on, for Weatherworks, and we'll we'll show all the different types of uh, food varieties that we're using to compare it to the atmosphere. <laughs> I must be hungry because I keep comparing everything to food. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that just about does it for precipitation types that we see in the winter. How about? I mean, I don't think you have anything else to add. No, right I, th I think uh, we've covered it all. And uh, you know, again, if you have questions, you know, please please let us know, you know, we have Twitter and Facebook, you know, send us, send us questions. Uh, yeah. we're, we're, we're always available. And, uh, you know, we, we, we love explaining things and, uh, yeah. Uh, talking about weather, of course, and uh, there's uh, social media is huge right now, Mike. And that's where you get a lot of these terms too. You, you see, folks, you know, wow, what is the stuff falling from the sky? It's not hail. It's not sleet. It, what's mm -hmm. what's this grapple stuff? So you know, social media lends to a huge part of this. And and and, and we, have, as much as we love social media, you know, it's mm -hmm. uh, sometimes a little bit of a of a tough one to, to deal with, but you know, we, we love to get into videos and, you know, if you have videos or, or weather things you want to send to us in the winter and even the summer, you know, we're safety first, but you know, send Weatherworks uh, your, your videos. We, we'd be, we'd love to use them and, 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 you know, promote them on the, on our Twitter and Facebook. And of course, give the, give the photographer credit and things like that. But it's, it's, we love getting uh, all that kind of stuff into us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially during the winter time. Winter storm pictures, snow pictures, always great. Um, if you don't want to do that on social media, you can always drop us a line in uh, weather lounge at weatherworksinc.com. That's our email. Um, so certainly um, drop us a line there and you can always say, hey, I want to know a little bit more about a certain topic and we might consider it for our next podcast. You sure. never know. Um, but, We're looking for you know, good topics. Yeah. Again, you know, like I said, this is the Weather Lounge. We're on, you know, we're by Weatherworks, obviously. Um, you could find Weatherworks on all those social media platforms that Brad already talked about. And um, 
you know, we're also doing this podcast bi-weekly. So certainly subscribe to that podcast. Make sure you don't miss any episodes coming up in the next several months. And uh, we're also on all your podcasting apps. So wherever you get your podcast, I'm sure if you search the Weather Lounge, you'll be able to find us. So that is the Weather Lounge podcast and precipitation types for this episode. And in the future, we'll have another episode in another two weeks. So please join us then. And in the meantime, stay safe out there during the winter, everybody.